Good morning, Physics 30. I hope you guys are all having a great rainy Monday today. Uh, so today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they're going to look at this particular topic, fission and fusion. It's a nice short set of notes, so it should be a quick video. And let's get started. Nuclear fission, nuclear fusion. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with tablet not working... <sighs> Plugged in. I swear, we have to do this every single Monday. I swear. Okay. There we go. Tablet's plugged in. It wouldn't be a lesson with me without some type of technical failing of some variety, right? Or me dropping something. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, Fission and fusion are just two specific categories of nuclear reaction, and they are not um not a category of nuclear decay okay so they're they're pretty cool um and they're very relevant in um either our today's energy industry um or in what people are kind of hoping maybe one day we can use for energy so with nuclear fission, um, now anytime you look at the word fission, it means to split. And even this word comes up in biology. Uh, fission is technically the definition of how bacteria reproduce. So binary fission. So to fis fission always means to split. So with fission, it's splitting of a large atom, so a large radioactive nuclei, into two or more smaller ones. Um, however, fusion, ladies and gentlemen, the word fusion, well, it has the word fuse in it, which means to mash together. So you take two lighter atoms and make a bigger one. Okay. Um, so a couple, there's a couple specific requirements for this. Um, with nuclear fission, uh, what has to happen is the parent element has to be big enough. As if it's not big enough, it's not going to be, and generally you also want it to be radioactive in general. Radioactive nuclei tend to break apart. And most really, really big nuclei are radioactive anyway. Um, and then you're going to need a high-speed neutron. So high-speed neutron fired at it to bust apart that particular um, nuclei. But you don't need much energy in order to, to break this apart. So let's think about this way from uh, Chem 30. You guys remember the activation energy diagrams? Yeah. So you could, and with these things, a ton of energy is released. So the energy released from fission is a million times greater than released by chemical reactions. So like, the amount of energy released by things, these things, is why they're so desirable for power plants. Okay, because one gram of uranium, once run through nuclear fission, could power Calgary for a week. One gram. So that, that's pretty good. So you guys remember activation energy. So this is an exothermic reaction. So if it was just going to be your energy diagram with your, your delta H, and this is your reaction progress, well, that is the energy before and energy after. Except it wouldn't be H is, it, H is enthalpy of chemical reaction. It'd be something different h of nuclear reaction i guess um i'll we'll just leave it as delta h to stick with the, the chem 30. well if we're going to draw it with activation energy it would look kind of like that so the difference here that blue line is your activation energy so it doesn't take a lot of initial energy to get that going okay in order for nuclear fusion to happen, though, you need a lot more very specific requirements, and you don't find it very often, um, or at least on Earth, you don't find it at all. In the universe, you find it all over the place. Stars and suns, that's, that's where you see it happening. So in order for this to happen, you need high density and high temperature. Where are you going to find that? On a star. So this high density, so is so that way you have really good probability of these two nuclei actually colliding into each other. And you need the extremely high energy because you've got two positively charged nuclei. They repel. They don't want to hang out. So because they're repelling, you need a lot of pressure and a lot of energy just to get them to go towards each other. So a ton of energy in order to get these protons close enough. Okay. However, the energy released from fusion is extreme. 
okay, it is, you know, three to four times greater than fission. So that's why some people are kind of, hmm, how can we get nuclear fusion happening as an energy source? You guys remember the, the spider, the second Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire and how Doc Ock was actually trying to like control the sun in his fancy getup. Um, but yeah, that is uh, what they were um, trying to do there is use the sun and nuclear fusion in order to get energy for and solve the energy crisis. Don't get me started on the inaccuracies of that movie. Just, just, yeah, we're not going to go there, <laughs> but they're there. So let's look at the um, activation energy diagrams needed because you need a ton of energy to overcome. So if we were going to draw this down to each diagram, it would like be like huge, 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 huge energy released. However, for our activation energy diagrams, it would look something kind of like that. So you would need a lot of activation energy here. Oopsie, so that's the energy needed there in order to get the reaction to start, right? So where's the activation energy here? Significantly smaller, okay? So there, there's your overlap with, uh, with Kim. So ladies and gentlemen, don't be surprised. University, Kim and physics often saunter along hand in hand. They, they overlap a lot. Okay, so fission doesn't really occur often in nature. For the most part, it's a man-made process. As, I mean, I'm sure it happens, but I can't think of any times when nuclear, I can think of that nuclear fission has happened that we know of naturally. Um, most of what we use it for is nuclear power plants and atomic bombs. So nuclear power plants, not terrible. Atomic bombs, really terrible. I'm sure that in uh, social studies, you guys have talked a lot about um, their influence on history and their uh, the impact of the Cold War and their role in the ending of World War II and all that. Um, so big political topic, that one. Um, and fusion, it occurs all the time in the universe, but in stars. Okay, so our sun is, is a classic example of a star that is going through nuclear fusion. And it's all of the heat and radiation released from nuclear fusion from our star, which provides us the heat that we need to exist. Cool, hey? Yeah, we depend on nuclear fusion. Oh, yeah. So byproducts of the reaction, uh, fission produces a whole bunch of highly radioactive products and particles. So radioactive nuclei. So if you're going to fire a bunch of neutrons at uh, radioactive uranium and cause it to bust apart, well, you could get some other radioactive products like radioactive radon or something. And so that's the, one of the big dangers of nuclear power plants is, well, what do you do with all the leftover radioactive material? So that's that's the risk okay and the thing about uh, nuclear fusion well that's where most of the elements on the periodic that's, that's where the elements on our periodic table are made that's where matter comes from are these bigger elements is from fusion reactions so not often are you going to get um a ton of radioactive particles produced from it most of the atoms produced by fusion are just other ordinary atoms. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, um, what I would say about this one here, this table, I would highlight and say on test, uh, we don't have a test, there's no diploma. Um, so when it comes to any questions on your assignment with this one, um, yeah, double check and maybe put a sticky on it. So yay, COVID taking away your tests. No yay COVID. Um, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is just a nice little picture of uh, fission versus fusion. So here you have your uranium-235 and you've got a neutron that is fired at it. Now uranium-235 is already unstable. It's radioactive. It's already decaying. If you leave it long enough, it'll fall apart anyway. So if something's already breaking and falling apart and you fling a high speed neutron at it, well, guess what? It's going to break. So it's going to bust apart. It's going to release some gamma rays. It's going to break apart into two different nuclei. Now, 
it could be these two products here don't have to be the same every time. Um, it just depends on how this nuclei breaks apart. And then you're going to have three release neutrons. Now, these three release neutrons are high speed. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? This is where atomic bombs come from and how, and how they work. Well, one of the, the, the activator thingies are going to fire off neutrons. It'll bust apart one of the uranium at nuclei, which will then, or several of them, and every for every one that gets busted apart, it releases three more. So you get a chain reaction. Well, this one will break apart three more nuclei. Well, guess what? Then for each one of these, there's going to release three more. So then that means there's going to be nine neutrons. So it's going to just go up ex exponentially. So that's why they're so dangerous and why these things can get out of control so darn quickly. Um, like, for example, uh, Chernobyl, the nuclear meltdown at the power plant at Chernobyl which in the former USSR um, came from a, a safety malfunction um with this uh, and you know what? i'll actually post a youtube video uh with this video about um chernobyl and nuclear meltdowns it's it's quite interesting and uh, some of the effects that it's still having today so the results of this chain reaction when not controlled properly so i'll see if i can find something on the can do nuclear reactor which is can do canada it was invented in canada which is pretty cool so Definitely much safer than what was created in the USSR back in the 70s. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, how we would write this out as a re uh, nuclear reaction. So, you have your one neutron, and you would then add that to your uranium-235, 92 uranium protons. Whoopsie. I don't want that. I want my arrow. And then you would write this with our strontium and then 90 and 38 plus our xenon, xenon 14354 plus your three neutrons. So ladies and gentlemen, you would also see your conservation of nucleons and your conservation of charge in this reaction as well. All right, nuclear fusion. So in this case, we have a deuterium isotope and a tritium isotope. Now, what deuterium is, deuterium is a fancy variety of hydrogen. So uh, that has a neutron, okay? So it has a higher mass number because it actually has a neutron there, okay? And then a tritium is, um, has two neutrons in its isotope. So if we take these guys here and then we add the deuterium and the tritium and then we are going to get a neutron released in that reaction and then you're also going to get your helium. Cool? All right, so you can also see the conservation of charge and your conservation of nucleons in this guy too. All right. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have a good day. Um, there's a few practice problems for you to work on, and then there's this practice problem here. And, ladies and gentlemen, no fires, injuries, or explosions, and no nuclear meltdowns. All right. Have a good day. Now I can't stop this thing. Hey, right, Bye, guys.